Tom, thank you very much for joining us for Soundtracks Quick Hits. My pleasure. The word uh, prana means breath, relates to breath, and I imagine that's something that has a special resonance for a trumpet player. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the life force. Prana is the life force, so and I always equated trumpet with yoga because when you play a wind instrument, it's also a form of yoga breathing, so it's a form of self-healing. And it's also on a spiritual level because you're, the music brings you, brings you in tune with yourself. Trumpet, of course, requires an awful lot of discipline, a lot, a lot of time, as they say, in, in the shed. And, and that's a discipline in a way similar to, to yoga. Well, yeah, it's, it's good because it gives you a discipline. Both disciplines are, give you a ritual each day that is meaningful, and it keeps you, it reminds you, it teaches you about life because you need discipline in order to live. Everything that in our body is also related to our mind, so there's also the spiritual level too, but uh, But it's, it, uh, it is a definite discipline, but I'm happy that I have the discipline because, I mean, I'm happy that I have a challenge each day because it keeps me centered, you know. Um. It seems like over the last 10 years that you've been especially prolific, that, uh, you know, these albums with new compositions have been coming out almost, almost every year. And I'm, I'm wondering, is that in my imagination, or what, what do you think accounts for the productivity? Well, yeah, I, I'm lucky. My wife, Angela, really helped me, gave me a, we, we got a, found a beautiful place to live in, and uh, I have a lot of time to uh, write and uh, practice, so a door of creativity opens and I can work more and more on music, and uh, plus uh, she helps me too with, with diet and nutrition, and that's very important too for for clarity of mind, and uh, music is definitely related to your health. I mean, it is a healing process, so to play music, you're healing yourself. There's a, uh, like a, a, a brightness, like a happiness in, in the music that, that I hear now. I love to, you know, Sail Away. I, I love the older stuff. But, but you know, I've listened to, say, Roman Nights, and, and there, there's, it makes me happy. Oh, wow, thank you. Yeah, well, it's true. I try to portray happiness because, uh, and hope. I mean, uh, you can still, there might be an element of sadness, but, and, but music can help us transcend the sadness. Um. The trumpet has this amazing quality like that. It, it's, it's both, you know, it's, it's martial as well as, as spiritual, and uh, it, it contains all these sort of contradictions. Well, I, I want to downplay, I'd, I'd rather downplay the military aspect. Maybe it's controversial, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not into war. I, but I, maybe I shouldn't say that, but that's the way I am. Um, so I, tr I prefer to not think of the military aspect of trumpet playing. Can you talk about the, the advantages and disadvantages for writing for a, a larger group versus working with your quintet? Well, I mean, there's no separation in the mediums because I like, as a writer, I think I can make a contribution by bringing in longer works. Like Charlie Parker said, he was getting bored with the stereotype changes. That, that was Charlie Parker, you know, that was in... When he said that, that's what motivated him to go to another in another direction. And I myself, I feel bored too. And so that's why, that's why I write because I feel by writing I can create something fresh. That's the best way I can do create something fresh, regardless of what size group. <laughs> said that uh, your songs are all uh, from your personal life, personal experiences, and they're, they're trying to tell, tell something, tell a story. Well, I try to relate it to, to my, 
my to my previous experiences sometimes it's it's a, a melody that comes out of out of the blue so I'll write it down I mean I was given a gift because I try to transcend my ego I try not to say I try not to pat myself on the back I think that hampers some people sometimes they think oh wow did I write that that's really great I must be really great you know and they, they get hung up in the ego part you know and, or they take a solo or maybe they they do the opposite they think oh that was terrible you know I and that's ego too I mean but the ego can help you survive you know it can help you can help direct your energy towards survival, which is good. But you sh it, I try to keep the flow because you, you, if you start criticizing yourself too much or even complimenting yourself too much, it can impede the flow of the creativity. The self-criticism can really be hampering. If you can especially compare yourself with other people, you can sometimes can get discouraged. And I've had writer's blocks because of that. I don't think that way anymore. So how, how do you how do you keep that uh, that flow going? Most of my peers reject me anyway. My my male peers mostly reject me because I don't have the street thing that they have. You know, I'm from an academic environment, and I'm not. You know, I never had the street thing as much as my peers. So I, I don't. Belong, I never. I was always a misfit anyway. Maybe I was more accepted by black people because they could see I was alienated. I don't smoke. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't drink, so, you know, and you're supposed to, you, if you, you know, you're supposed to drink. <laughs> if you don't drink, you're not, it's not cool, you know, so for, I might not have the, well, I shouldn't put myself down. Uh, sort of like a, you know aggression and like you know the, the, the cutting contest and that sort of thing that's been in jazz culture and, and that I definitely don't I don't hear that in your music and it, it's well I mean the music that came out of Kansas City a, a cutting session or not you have to admit it's the, the fauna uh, the end result was phenomenal Charlie Parker Ben Webster you know and Tony Smunk went to Kansas City too, and Mary Lou Williams and uh, Coleman Hawkins. I mean, it was a phenomenal culture. A, cu a cutting contest can be friendly. I mean, listen to uh, Dizzy with Sonny Rollins and Sonny Stitt. I mean, they're 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 a two tenor battle, but it's a friendly battle. You know, they're they're matching each other's phrases and you know in, in a conversational way, but. Um, uh, so I think, you know, that's, that's, that's a healthy thing. I'm not a hanger out anymore. I used to be, but, um, but I used to drink, you know, that's how, that's how I could hang out. I was drinking, but I found out if, if I kept drinking, I would die. So I chose to live. Um, but music is drinking too. I mean, music is, is, is food. I mean, I better stop. I, uh, you got enough to uh, blackmail me, so... Uh. <laughs>